Hello, and welcome to the final episode of Space Invaders. My name is Tom Medlock, and I'm just going to run you through what I have for my final submission. Here you can see I have the entire game right here. Um, no two-player mode, however, uh, but I was able to get the attractor mode. I probably spent a little bit too much time on, on this, um, but pressing space button begins the game. So you can see here, all the sound effects are in place. If I die, the sound plays. I muted it by pressing the M button. This is possible because the sound manager has a state pattern where it will uh, you know, play nothing if the sound is off and it'll play something if the sound is on. Uh, so you can see here that the UFO you know, continues to spawn. Down in the right hand corner you can see my output. Um, the movement is increasing. Um, if I press M again, you can hear the little, you know, uh, suspenseful uh, marching sound that it does. Uh, the UFO will pick a random uh, a random d uh, position to spawn from. If I hold down C, you can see that uh, I am able to see the collision boxes. Um, and, uh, oh geez. Well, you can see here that it is game over. And it'll take me back to the... Um, the attractor screen and here uh i keep moving uh you know the game starts over again by pressing space um and i am able to you know continue playing the game if i want to uh, let's see if i can beat this wave so i can prove to you that the game will uh increase in difficulty and uh it will uh oh man i'm really bad at this game um and you know basically they'll speed up and then they'll also start shooting missiles faster um and then how i handle the so when when the when the grid is oh man when the grid is destroyed it respawns and it adds a like a certain amount to the interval of the bomb and the movement however the amount that it adds is never going to be enough to take it back up to where it was originally so instead what happens is um it you know slowly gets smaller and smaller but it always will check for a bottom out threshold. Oh, please, please let me beat these guys. Um, and it will uh, basically, oh my God, I need to focus on this. Um, it will basically just, you know, get harder and harder, but it will never go below a certain amount. It will also uh, set the Y spawn to lower than, uh, than it starts out as. Um, and, oh, those guys are there we go so now i got a life and uh it spawns a little bit lower and uh it you know it keeps going you can see here that all these guys are reused there's factories for all of them i can't remember if i'm if i'm responsible for two waves or one wave but i mean i could just play this all day because it i do have it stable looping forever so um you know it, it will work uh and then you can see here that uh you know they're they're dropping their bombs a little faster the bombs also have a, a collision group when i get low enough you'll see that the bombs uh, share a collision group and, and detect but the but the bombs are dropping at a random interval uh, that's added to the base interval so there's still like a little bit of randomization towards it but it is getting harder and harder and harder uh, as it goes on you can see the animations are also tied to it as well um, oh my god yeah so yeah there's Yep, and they're a little bit lower now, and here they go again. Uh, so basically, this will just keep going and going and going. Uh, when I kill these, you can see that the that the shields are actually, um, you know, it's changing the same as the uh, same as the aliens. Um, and yeah, so basically that's it. Um, uh, you can see down here that it's cleaning up. Um, not all the managers clean up, but uh, let's dive into the code really quick. So. Basically, uh, what we have here is the game manager, and the game manager basically is called for render and update, and he has his game states, and he passes the, the actual game time into the game into the, the game state, and then here you can see uh, just two examples here. I have pause, which only does the uninterruptible time, so I have two timers. I have one that's uninterruptible for th animations uh, uh, such as the player explosion, and also um, the delayed changing of states from pause to resume. 
and then I also have um, the obviously the regular gameplay state uh, where it you know continues to update. Uh, I have the attractor mode and the uh, the end of game. Uh, so those are two things that I have. Um, and basically it starts off in the attractor mode and then it, you know it spawns, sets the grid, and the spawns a level. And down here you can see it just turns on the alien manager, the shield manager, and the UFO manager. Um, and you know that's kind of how how that works. It'll just keep going and going and going. So f I wanted to show you something that I'm a little proud of here. Uh, I added some functionality for the scrolling font, and how I did that was by giving it a command, and having the command when it executes, it increases the substring, updates the message, and then adds itself back to the timer. And when it's finished, it calls a, a, an observer manager. Uh, and notifies the observer manager and then that allows it to like begin scrolling and spawning the next font on the next line So it's kind of a one-size-fits-all solution. I'm really proud of it um, And uh, I like how you know, I was once I was able to get it going It was kind of just you know copying that and, and, and making it work for everything else So if you see the font manager here I create all of these fonts right here and then when it comes to be their time I scroll them with the interval that they that they need to be scrolled at and then I add them each page has its own render batch so that way I can just clear off the page and start over again from the beginning when uh, when the game uh, you know recycles at, at the beginning again um, I, you also saw the explosions that are in the game uh, I use a strategy pattern for that um, so basically I have the explosion type which is a base type and then a default timer add uh, but unlike that uh, unlike that specific instance, for example, the player ship explosion needs to be an uninterruptible animation. So uh, I add that, you know, I animate uninterruptible at the beginning of, you know, the getting of the sprites when it sets the sprite. Uh, I set the timer for uh, the players exploding as an uninterruptible timer. And then um, I also, when it despawns, I stop the animation and then I recycle the, the explosion back into there. So basically, uh, the base explosion, the explosion itself is just constantly setting itself to these new sprites and it's being reused so that way I never have to uh, make any new explosions. I can just reuse the same explosion for all of them. Same with the bombs. You saw the bombs. There was a zigzag, the um, plunger, and the um, the straight bomb. So these, you know, the same thing. Uh, you know, you get those sprites and then you, you assign them, animate them, um... The shields are, you know, a composite pattern. Uh, they have the factories for it, the object pool. Uh, the collision uses uh, the uses the uh, the visitor pattern, which is in here. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. So also, I have the input manager down here, uh, and he basically just checks for the input every single frame, uh, so on and so forth. Um, so, uh, two things I just want to say, uh, one, the UFO does not drop bombs. The reason for this is because I did not realize the UFO drops bombs. Um, so I just didn't have, end up having enough time. I, I, got, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm, I'm actually on my way out of town, like right soon. So, um, thank you for the extension, but I unfortunately was not able to use the, the full extension. Um, uh, also there's no two player mode. I think I mentioned that before. Uh, just didn't have enough time for that. Um, but other than that, uh, the game is a fully functioning single player. I mean, at least as far as I'm aware, it's fully functioning single player. Uh, if you do encounter any bugs, I tested this extensively and I had not encountered any bugs. So if you've encountered a bug, it probably exists. In fact, it, I mean, if you encounter it, it, it exists, but I was unable to find it during my testing of this. Um, but I am proud that it is a lot better than my Centipede game um, in Andre's class. Um, that one was not a very stable piece of software. So uh, I like the data, the data driven approach to this. You might find in my code some of the things towards the end are getting a little bit sloppy only because time is running out and uh, I was getting a little nervous that I wouldn't complete. Um, you can see the controls and the buttons that, uh, that you need to press to make certain things happen in the game are in the design document. Um, if you have any questions or you, you, know, you, you want to ask me a question or anything, just feel free to email me. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much for this quarter. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed this class. Um, 
And I look forward to uh, hopefully taking more classes with you in the future during my graduate program. So uh, thank you very much and enjoy your spring break.